Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 19th of July. Protest against inflation and GST hikes stall parliament in India. Opposition demands review. Sri Lanka opposition leader Sajid Premadasa withdraws from race for president. And Pakistan PM urges poll body to announce a verdict in long-delayed PTI foreign funding case. And now for all the details. Opposition parties on Tuesday held protests to corner the Indian government over inflation and imposition of good and services tax on a number of essential commodities. The second day of the parliament's monsoon session also saw ruckus and disruption amid the opposition star in both the houses which were adjourned within hours. Lawmakers of opposition parties, including the Congress, on Tuesday held protests in the parliament premises over rising inflation and called for the Indian government, led by PM Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party, to review the decision to impose GST, the goods and services tax, on a number of essential commodities. The government on Monday introduced a 5% GST on pre-packaged and labelled pulses and branded and packed cereals while LED lamps, lights and fixture will now witness a GST increase from 12 to 18 percent. Opposition leaders said they will continue to fight against this injustice until a discussion on the matter is held and the decision is reviewed. Essential commodities है इस पे जो tax GST tax उन्होंने लगाया है उसके बारे में हम अंदर जाकर अपने बात में लगेंगे और लड़ेंगे। The second day of the parliament's monsoon session also saw ruckus and disruption amid the opposition stir in both the houses, which were adjourned within hours. Meanwhile, the joint opposition's candidate Margaret Elva, a Congress veteran, on Tuesday filed her nomination papers for the vice presidential election to be held on August 6. 80-year-old Elva, a former governor of Rajasthan and other states, is pitted against BJP-led NDA's candidate Jagdeep Dhankar, who filed his papers on Monday. Dhankar resigned as governor of West Bengal state to enter the race. And Sri Lanka's main opposition leader, Sajid Premadasa, withdrew from the presidential race on Tuesday and promised support to a low-profile politician, Dallas Lahaperuma, from the ruling party, who will take on acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe in a tight contest. The 225-seat parliament votes on Wednesday to choose the new president, who will lead efforts to address the country's economic and political collapse. Sri Lankan opposition leader Sajid Premadasa announced on Tuesday he had dropped out of the race to become president of the crisis-hit nation and promised his support to rival candidate Dallas Alaha Peruma, set to take on acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe. Taking to Twitter, Premadasa said his main opposition Samagi Jana Balavegaya party and our alliance and our opposition partners will work hard towards making Alaha Peruma the winner. The 225-seat parliament votes on Wednesday to choose the new president, who will lead efforts to address the country's economic and political collapse. The House finalized three candidates, Vigrame Singhe, former cabinet minister Alaha Peruma and the leader of National People's Power, Anura Kumara Disana Yake, on Tuesday. It was not immediately clear how much support the two leading candidates, 73-year-old Vikrame Singhe and 63-year-old Dallas, had in parliament. Vikrame Singhe is deeply unpopular among protesters who stormed his office and official residence earlier this month when he was Prime Minister, along with those of ousted President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. Nevertheless, Vikrame Singhe is backed by a faction of the ruling party to be President. 
Protesters angered by months-long shortages of fuel and food and rocketing prices after the country nearly ran out of dollars for imports came out on the streets on Tuesday against Vikramasinghe's candidacy. Alaha Peruma is seen as more acceptable to the protesters than Vikramasinghe. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has called upon the country's election commission to announce the long-delayed verdict in the foreign funding case pertaining to irregularities in funds of ousted Premier Imran Khan's opposition PTI party. This came after PTI recorded a thumping winner in the Punjab by polls, defeating Sharif's ruling PMLN party. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday called upon ECP, the Election Commission of Pakistan, to announce the long-delayed judgment on the PTI foreign funding case. For long has opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan been given a free pass despite his repeated and shameless attacks on state institutions. Impunity given to him has hurt the country, PM Shehbaz said on Twitter. The foreign funding case was filed by former PTI leader Akbar S. Babar in 2014, alleging serious financial irregularities in the PTI's funding from Pakistan and abroad. The Prime Minister's statement came after opposition PTI recorded a thumping win in the politically crucial Punjab province on Sunday, defeating Sharif's ruling PMLN party. However, despite the victory, ousted Premier Imran Khan blamed state machinery of interfering in the voting process and lambasted the chief election commissioner Sikandar Sultan Raja was incompetent and dishonest and joined hands with the PMLN. This is the whole thing for the whole country. We have eight cases. Eight cases are which we have election commission. And they have taken the case of the election commission. They have rejected it. We have gone to the government. और आठ दफा अदालत ने हमारे साथ खड़े होके इनको ओवररूल किया इलेक्शन कमीशन को इमरान खान हैज नाउ डिमांडेड फ्री एंड फेयर जनरल इलेक्शंस इन द कंट्री ब्लेमिंग ही वाज आउस्टेड इन अप्रैल थ्रू अ कॉन्स्पिरेसी बाय द यूएस एंड लीडर्स ऑफ द इनकम्बेंट गवर्नमेंट इंटीरियर मिनिस्टर राणा सनाउल्लाह सेड ऑन मंडे द रूलिंग कोलिशन विल कंप्लीट इट्स टर्म अंटिल मिड नेक्स्ट ईयर एंड जनरल इलेक्शंस विल बी हेल्ड only after carrying out electoral reforms and fixing the economy. More news from Pakistan. The death toll climbed to at least 23 on Tuesday in the incident of a wedding party boat capsize in central Pakistan. The overloaded boat carrying more than 100 people was heading to a wedding across the Indus River in the district of Sadiqabad when it capsized. The passengers were mostly women and children and all those on board belonged to one clan. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif also expressed condolences to the families of the deceased in a message on Twitter. Nearly 35 divers from a state-run rescue service took part in operations to find survivors and around 90 persons had been rescued so far, officials said. At least 26 were still missing till the last reports came in. Such accidents are common in Pakistan where rickety wooden boats are often used to transport goods and people on rivers and lakes. Moving on, political activists of the Awami Action Committee in Gilgit, Baltistan staged a massive protest to demand the release of political prisoners detained for several years by Pakistan government. They also voiced concern over misuse of draconian laws to muzzle dissent in the illegally occupied region. Members of the Awami Action Committee in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a protest against the arrests of political activists who have been languishing for years in Pakistani jails and want the Pakistan government to release them immediately. Protesters blamed Pakistan of misusing anti-terrorism laws in the region to muzzle reasonable voices that resist its oppression. The lamented Islamabad has illegally framed dozens and arbitrarily detained and persecuted rights activists and locals. They said hollow promises to release the prisoners keep coming from the politicians, but only at the time of elections. Activists said they'll continue the protest until their demands are met.
ہمارے نظروں کے سامنے نہیں آتے ہیں اس وقت تک ہمارا دانا جاری ہو ساری رہے گا کیونکہ یہ بے وفا لوگ ہیں ان کو وفا کرنا نہیں آتا ہے وفادار تو ہم ہیں اتنے عرصے سے ستر سالوں سے وفا کرتے ہوئے رہے ہیں Locals and activists say that freedom of speech and other fundamental rights are foreign to them. They claim anybody who dares to raise voice against this discrimination is subjected to intimidation, arrest and imprisonment. And in news from Afghanistan, the United States will simplify the application process for Afghan special immigrant visas with applicants only needing to file one form, according to a statement issued on Monday by the Department of Homeland Security DHS. New applicants beginning this week will no longer need to file a separate petition for special immigrant status. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorka said in a joint statement. The Afghans who assisted 20 years of U.S. involvement in their country are looking for a special visa to live in America, expelling Homeland Security from the adjudication process. Following Taliban takeover of Kabul last August, thousands of Afghans fled the country fearing reprisals from the Islamist group. And moving on to news from Nepal, clad in saffron-colored dresses, scores of Kavriyas, the devotees of Hindu god of destruction Lord Shiva, are flocking the famed Pashupati Nath temple in Nepal to mark the holy month of Shravan. According to religious beliefs, Lord Shiva showers fortune on the devotees who visit his shrines during the holy monsoon month. Scores of devotees of Hindu god of destruction Lord Shiva called the Kavaryas are thronging Nepal's famed Pashupatinath temple to offer prayers and take a holy dip in the Bhagmati river to celebrate the holy monsoon month of Shravan. During this period, Kavaryas, clad in saffron-colored dresses, walk to the banks of the river to fetch holy water and carry it back in their decorated pots to their hometowns. Shravan is considered extremely auspicious in Hindu religion and falls between July and August. Devotees were seen offering oil lamps in front of the temple's fire pit and they believed that offering prayers to Shiva on this month would help them attain salvation. अर्पण कर के अपना जोन बा आत्मा के संतुष्टि। Thousands of Hindu devotees offered their obeisance to Lord Shiva in Pashupati Nath Temple to mark the first Monday of the holy month of Shravan. According to religious beliefs, Lord Shiva showers fortune on these devotees who visit his shrines during the month of Shravan, especially on Mondays. Well, India is home to several landfills with tons of rubbish being dumped daily across several cities. In a bit for a greener future, the officials in northern Punjab state has transformed a polluted garbage dump yard at an industrial site into a mini forest. Have a look. A dump yard in India's northern Punjab state converted into a forest by local authorities turning the previously polluted three acres of land into a green belt. It took three months to make the dump yard, which lay in Amritsar city's industrial area, into a forest which boasts 65 different varieties of trees. These trolley jo gober ki, organic khaad ki lagi hai, baaki patto ki 15-20 trolley lagi hai, aur pure ka pura teen ekar, सिर्फ तीन महीने में कितना हरा बड़ा हो गया है तो ये पूरा रोल मॉडल है पंजाब के लिए इंडिया के लिए क्योंकि पूरे का पूरा डंप यार्ड कन्वर्ट हुआ है एक जंगल में अमृतसर्स फोकल पॉइंट व्हिच इस द सिटीज ओल्डेस्ट इंडस्ट्रियल एरिया बिकेम अ डंप यार्ड ओवर द इयर्स एस सराउंडिंग इंडस्ट्रियल और ये कोई विश्वास नहीं कर सकता आज इसको देख के कि यहाँ पे पहले एक डंप यार्ड था और आज जंगल मिनी जंगल बन गया है। इंडिया इस होम टू सेवरल लैंडफिल्स विद अराउंड 6,000 टन्स ऑफ रबिश बीइंग डंप डेली इन द कैपिटल सिटी अलून। द लैंडफिल्स प्रोड्यूस सिग्निफिकेंट अमाउंट्स ऑफ मीथेन गैस एंड � Studies have shown that living near a landfill increases the risk of cancer, birth defects, and asthma. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.